Thank you. In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful, Mr. President, at the outset, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the Russian Federation for convening this emergency meeting. I also extend my gratitude to China and Algeria for requesting this meeting, as well as those members that supported convening of this meeting. We also thank Ms. DiCarlo for her briefing. Mr. President, distinguished member of the Council, we request this urgent meeting and attend the Council today to address a matter of the grave importance and urgency, one that threatens international peace and security and challenges the very principle upon which this esteemed body was founded. As we address in our letter today to your Mr. President, the covert the assassination of Mr. Ismail Haniyeh, the political chief of the Palestinian Islamic resistance movement Hamas, and the great leader of the Palestinian people, legitimate a struggle for self-determination as the result of an aggressive act of terrorism by Zionist occupying regime of Israel. Mr. Hanye, who was in Tehran upon an official invitation of the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran to attend the inauguration ceremony of the new president of the Islamic Republic of Iran with the presence of leaders of many foreign countries was targeted alongside his companion in his residence in Tehran today at around 2 a.m. local time. This act of terror is just another manifestation of Israelis decaying long patterns of terrorism and sabotage targeting Palestinians and other supporters and sympathizers of the Palestinian cause across the region and beyond. In addition to its terrorist objective, Israel was also pursuing political goal with this act, aiming to disrupt the first day of the new government of the Islamic Republic of Iran, which has prioritized strengthening peace and stability in the region and enhancing cooperation and constructive engagement with international community. The Islamic Republic of Iran condemn in the strongest possible terms this horrible terrorist act as a most serious violation of international law and the charter of the United Nations as well as a grave breach of Iran's sovereignty and national security. This aggressive act of terrorism, as provocative as it is, constitutes a serious breach of peace and security and requires immediate and effective action by the UN Security Council in the discharge of its responsibility under the Charter. This crime is not isolated but part of a broader pattern of aggressive actions and policies by Israeli regime against other nations in the region. Just hour before this heinous crime, this regime carried out covertly terrorist attack in the southern suburbs of Beirut, Lebanon, targeting civilians and civilian infrastructures. The war mongering Leaders of this rough regime have shown complete disregard for the basic norms and principles of international law. Their crimes reveal a lack of commitment to peace and stability in the region and suggest an intention to escalate conflict and expand the war through the entire region. The responsibility of the United States as a strategic ally and main supporters of the Israeli regime in the region cannot be overlooked in this horrific crime. This act could not be occurred without the authorization and intelligence support of the U.S. The continuation of Israel's aggression threatened peace and stability in the region. The international community, particularly the United Nations Security Council, cannot remain indifferent to such heinous crimes and must take decisive action to address this violation and hold the perpetrators accountable. Mr. President, persistent and systematic attack on Palestinian civilians in Gaza, characterized by disappropriation, use of the force, and discriminate targeting 
have resulted in tragic loss of life, widespread destruction, and depending humanitarian and depending depending humanitarian crisis. This action, which frequently targets civilian infrastructure, residential area, and medical facilities, not only violate international humanitarian law, but also constitute war crimes under the Geneva Conventions. Unfortunately, the inaction and inability of the Security Council have emboldened this occurrence regime, allowing it to continue committing war crimes against the oppressed people of Palestine and acts of aggression against other nations of the region. The Islamic Republic of Iran has repeatedly warned of the serious repercussions that the malicious activities of Israeli occupying regime pose to regional and international peace and security. Despite these provocations, Iran has consistently exercised maximum restraint. Following the Israeli regime covertly terrorist and armed attack on our diplomatic premises on Damascus, Syria on 1st April, we promptly notified the UN Security Council and Secretary General of the Israeli International Wrongful Act and called on the Security Council to denounce this unjustified criminal and terrorist act decisively and to take appropriate measures to prevent the recurrence of such crimes and aggressions. Regrettably, the Security Council has failed in this in its duty to maintain international peace and security, and a draft press statement proposed by Russia in condemning the Israeli atrocious act was blocked by the United States, United Kingdom, and France. Yet, it is now imperative that the occupying regime be held fully accountable for its atrocities. This regime must not be allowed to evade responsibilities for its violation and consequences that follow. Mr. President, distinguished member of the Council, for nearly 10 months, certain countries, particularly the United States, have shielded Israel from any responsibilities for the massacre in Gaza and malicious activities in the region. These countries have not only denied the inherent right of Palestinian resistance group to self-defense against Israeli atrocities, but have also shamelessly justified the Israeli massacre and genocide against defenseless Palestinian people under the pretext of self-defense for Israel. The U.S. and its allies have made cynical attempts to justify and cover up the atrocities committed by the Israeli regime against the people of Palestine through arbitrary and misleading interpretation of the concept of self-defense. Regrettably, the United States has once again chosen to turn a blind eye to reality and overlook the root causes of the current situation. Palestinian resistance groups like Hamas and other resistance groups in the region are not terrorists. They are legitimate groups under international law and were established to fight against occupation and aggression. Mr. President, the, Secretary, the Security Council must unequivocally condemn Israel for its horrible terrorist act as a most serious violation of international law and the Charter of the United Nations as well as a grave breach of Iran's sovereignty and national security. This condemnation should be strong and clear and reflect the international community's rejection of such violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity. Furthermore, the Security Council should take immediate step to hold Israel accountable for this act of aggression. This includes considering the imposition of sanctions and other measures that are necessary to prevent further violation and to signal that the Israeli malevolent activities will not be tolerated by the international community. The Council must also demand that the Israeli immediately cease all aggressive actions against the 
Palestinian territories and other nations in the region. This demand should be accompanied by the call for ending the occupation of the Palestine territories, the territory of Lebanon and the Syrian occupied Golan, in accordance with the international law and the principles of the United Nations. And finally, the Islamic Republic of Iran reserves its inherent right to self-defense in accordance with international law to respond decisively to this terrorist and criminal act when it deems necessary and appropriate. The Islamic Republic of Iran reaffirms its commitment to upholding international law and the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter. We believe that peace and stability in the region can only be achieved through respect for these principles. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. We must first stress the rank hypocrisy on display here today. This meeting has been called for by the world's number one sponsor of terrorism, responsible for the most horrifying barbarism across the region and the globe, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Iran has used its proxies, Hamas, the Houthis, and Hezbollah, to target Israel and our citizens from every direction. Just last week, children were innocently playing a soccer game in the Druze village of Majd al-Shams. An Iranian-supplied Falak-1 Hezbollah rocket murdered 12 of these children and injured 30 others. Where were the condemnations of Hezbollah and their Iranian suppliers for the butchery of these 12 children? All that was heard were expressions of concern for escalation and calling for both sides, again equating a democratic member state of the United Nations with a vicious terrorist organization to show restraint. Those who rarely seek stability in the region should welcome the removal of arch-terrorists, not call on both sides to restrain themselves. Yesterday, Israel carried out a precise strike against Hezbollah commander Fuad Shuka, a senior terrorist with the blood of Israelis and many others on his hands. He was the commander responsible for the Majd al-Shams massacre, along with all of Hezbollah's incessant missile attacks against Israel for the past nine and a half months. These attacks involved more than 6,500 rockets, hundreds of UAVs, and over 1,000 anti-tank missiles, killing dozens of Israeli soldiers and civilians, and forcing over 80,000 Israelis to evacuate their homes from the north of Israel. In addition, we wish to remind this council of Shuka's responsibility for the 1983 attack on the U.S. Marines and French forces in Beirut, murdering 241 U.S. soldiers and 58 French soldiers. This operation sends a clear message. We will defend ourselves and respond with great force against those who harm us. The State of Israel will not stand idly by. We will continue to defend ourselves and our citizens. The world must support Israel at this time and demand Hezbollah's compliance with the Security Council Resolutions 1701 by ceasing its attacks, withdrawing to the north of the Litani River, and disarming. We, on our side, have a duty to ensure the safe and secure return of Israelis to their homes in northern Israel, and we will continue to act to defend all the people of Israel. However, Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Houthis can only expel their venom thanks to the head of the snake. Since the horrific attack by Hamas on October 7th last year, Iran has provided some $800 million to Hezbollah, along with missile precision technology, anti-tank munitions, and explosive-laden UAVs. These are all used by Hezbollah against Israeli civilians. This is in addition to the more than $260 million annually provided by Iran to Hamas and Islamic Jihad, an amount which has increased over the past nine months. This support is reflected by the fact that over 30% of the military arms and munitions captured by Israel in the Gaza Strip were Iranian-produced. The actions of Hamas, the Houthis, and Hezbollah are not just an Israeli or Jewish problem. The Islamic regime will target any who stand in its way to achieve global tyranny. Iran uses its proxies to the detriment of Israel right now, but their vision is far wider. Now imagine these aspirations, these aspirations if Iran achieves its goal of possessing nuclear weapons capabilities. While this council perverts its mission prosecuting Israel as we defend our people, the Ayatollahs in Iran are formulating strategies to wipe Israel and the Jewish people 
from the face of the earth. They continue to provide millions of dollars in weapons also to the Houthis, who have put them to murderous use against Israel while they strangle world shipping routes. The Houthis alone have launched over 200 attacks against Israel since the October 7th massacre. The truth is that Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis are the poisonous tip of Iran's spear which is being held against the world's throat. Where is Iran's summons to this council for their grave violations of every relevant resolution, such as 2216 and 1701? Where are the condemnations of Hamas and their vile attack on October 7th? Where are the condemnations for Hezbollah and the Houthis and their puppet master, the Islamic regime? Members of the Council feign concern for a regional escalation, yet quake at the prospect of addressing the root of this escalation. I wish to cast your minds back for a moment to May 2nd, 2011. Then Secretary General Ban Ki-moon celebrated the termination of Osama bin Laden describing it as a watershed moment in our common global fight against terrorism. He exclaims his relief at the news that justice has been done to such a mastermind of international terrorism. Please, take a moment to reflect on this reaction just 13 years ago and contrast it with the UN's condemnations today. Ask yourselves what you believe is the reason for this drastic shift. The only conclusion we may reach is that because it is now Israel that is facing barbaric Iranian terror and taking necessary action to protect its citizens, that the UN takes issue. Iran is not merely a sponsor of terrorism. It is the very engine driving the machinery of death and destruction that threatens us all. The blood of innocent children in Majd al-Shams and of the victims of the October 7th massacre and all other victims since then, the ceaseless rocket fire on Israeli towns, the ongoing plight of the 115 hostages still being held by Hamas tomorrow for 300 days, all trace back to Tehran's ruthless ambitions. We urge the international community to hold the Islamic Republic accountable for its crimes. The world cannot afford to cower before the Ayatollah's tyranny. We therefore demand that this council moves to condemn Iran for its continued support of regional terrorism and increase its sanctions on Tehran. We must also list, it must also list the Iranian Revolutionary Guards as a terror organization as it continues to lead and coordinate attacks across the Middle East and the world. I thank you. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Like and share the video, and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our African videos. It's the best way to support us.